Okay, we're going to take a look at stem and leaf plot. This is actually pretty simple, and uh, this video is going to be pretty short, uh, but you're going to have to stick with me um, uh, for at least a few minutes in, to really make sure you uh, understand this. Uh, before we get going, if you are a math student, which I assume you are if you're watching this video, um, you may want to check out um, a lot of my additional videos on my channel. I literally have hundreds of videos that I think you'll find helpful if you like my teaching style. If you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification so you get my latest uh, videos. And if you're interested in my full math courses, I'll leave a link in uh, the description of this video to all my full comprehensive courses that um, really get into um, you know math you know, in a much more comprehensive and uh, deep way. But with that being said, let's talk about the stem and leaf plot. So the stem and leaf plot, like everything, we want to take a look at the words here, stem and leaf, okay? It's basically a way to look at data. So let's suppose data, right? It's just information, raw information. Let's say these here represent the scores of a quiz um, that I may, you know, maybe I gave to my class, right? So somebody unfortunately got a 40, didn't study, <laughs> watching too much Netflix. Then you got someone over here, 58, 56, et cetera, then somebody really did well, got a 92, and everything else in between. So we want to, you know, analyze this information. But if I just list the numbers down like so, you know, I'm scanning through them, it doesn't really give me maybe the best sense of, you know, the way the data is being uh, uh, distributed. Okay, so distribution of data, you know, we're trying to find patterns. Okay, how is this information being spread out? You know, that type of thing. We want to analyze it. So things like the stem and leaf plot and uh, along with uh, the stem and leaf plot, like related to this, a related topic would be like a box and whisker plot, histogram, frequency tables, etc. All those things are just way, ways of uh, looking at data. Okay, so... <clears throat> back specifically the stem and leaf plot. Now, I gave you just a sense of why we want to construct a, uh, a plot like this because we're going to explore this data in a better visual sense. Now, stem and leaf. Now, just imagine like a plant, right? Let's say you got like a plant, here's a planter, and here you have, and maybe this is called the stem, right, of a plant, and then you have little leaves. Maybe I don't have the right perfect uh, terminology, but you get the idea, right? So you have leaves that come off a particular stem and you have a stem over here or branch and you have leaves. So this kind of keep that model in mind uh, because that's really where this name comes from, stem and leaf. And it's very, actually very simple. Okay, so without further ado, let's construct a stem and leaf plot right now. So all you do is you basically make a T like so. And here we're gonna put the tens Okay, well, actually, let's do it this way. Let's put the stem, like actually write stem, and then you write leaf like so, not tens. This is the tens units, okay, and this will be the units, this will be the tens column, and this will be units digits. Let me just make it, and then I'll explain it, okay? So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to order our data, okay, from lowest to highest. Just it's better to do that, and we're going to start this way. So I'm going to put four, zero, okay? I'm going to construct this stem and leaf plot and I want you to kind of figure out what I'm doing okay so you can kind of see what's going on here so I got 58 I'm putting right here and 56 actually let me do it this way 56 and then I have 58 all right I have 65 I have 72 I have another 72 I have a 73, I have a 75, I have a 77, and I have a 79, okay? So now you have an 83, and an 88, and then a 92. Okay, this is our stem and leaf plot. Now if you look here, <clears throat> this is the column for all the tens uh, digits, okay, units, all right? So, we have our 40, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, etc. In this particular example, you could have anything in here, 30s, 20s, and, and beyond. So in this example, it's this is the tens units, but it would be your largest, um, whatever your uh, largest digit is, this is this would be this column for your stem. Now, coming off the stem is your leaves, okay? So here, I have 40, 
So I write that zero right there, okay? 56, I write that here, and I want to write this in order. That's why I kind of, uh, kind of rearrange this. 58 right there, 65, and then I have 72, 72. So I got to write both twos, 3, 5, 7, and 9, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And then here I have 83, 88, 83, 88, and then 92, okay? So what we'd like to do is to kind of make a key it's kind of uh, customary to make a key with this. So you can be like 9 slash 2 equals a 92 score. All right, something like that. So we kind of interpret what's going on. So this is basically a stem and leaf plot. Very simple, not that difficult to understand. But what's the advantage here? Well, the advantage is it shows the distribution of data. So if you can kind of see kind of the pattern, we kind of have you know, things that kind of like spread out like so, right? If I was to put this on its side, I would see like, you know, maybe like a certain pattern occurring. I don't know if you're familiar with the bell curve, which is like so, okay? This is a real typical way of like normal distribution, how things get kind of normally distributed. And basically, it's it says that underneath this curve, most people might, let's say, let's take a look at test grades, might get Cs and Bs. And then a few people are going to get A's, and even fewer people are going to get A pluses. And then some people, not a lot, are going to get D's. And then a very, very few amount of people are going to get F's. So we're just looking at a visual distribution of information. And we can follow that same kind of thing here. Okay, I can kind of see what's going on in this case. And you can see, oh, wow, look, a lot of people clearly uh, uh, scored in the 70s. Okay, and in the 80s. So between the 70s and 80s, a lot of people scored. You could just kind of just instantaneously tell that. But the advantage with the stem and leaf plot, I can see the specific um, grades. Oh, somebody got a 72. There was another 72, 73, 75, 77, 79. Now, if I kind of flip this real short or, or real quick, I'm sorry. If I had 40s, 50s. Um, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and I made what we call a histogram, that would look something like this, okay? It would be like, I'm just going to try to rough sketch this real quick. 60s, I had just one. In the 70s, I had a whole bunch. In the 80s, I had two, which would be the same as five. In the 90s, I just had one. So this would be like a histogram, Okay. And you would not have, the thing about the histogram, it shows the distribution pretty good. It shows a lot in the 70s, okay, um, here. So you're like, okay, a lot of people scored in the 70s. But with a histogram or a bar chart, it doesn't give me the specific um, grades. It doesn't, I don't see the actual specific grades. Where a stem and leaf plot, I could see the specific data going on in that particular stem, okay? That's the advantage of the st uh, stem and leaf plot. Pretty simple. No more difficult than that, but the idea here is you really have to understand um, why you're doing this in the first place, okay, and how it relates to other ways to visually interpret data. Okay, let's wrap up this video. Um, so again, you know, if you like my teaching style, I encourage you to subscribe, literally do videos every week. Um, it's something I really enjoy doing, so if you do so, please hit that bell notification. And again, I'll leave a link in, uh, links in the description of this video to my various uh, full comprehensive math courses if you want to learn more from me. And if you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. I get a lot of uh, comments on my videos, which I'm definitely grateful for. It lets me know how I'm doing and um, also gives me ideas on um, uh, future videos that I can better serve you with. So with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time and have a great day.